Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to start by asking you a very important question. And I want you to answer this question in your mind. And then we're going to kind of reflect on the nature of the question itself and how a lot of times it's going to get answered. And the question is this. What matters most to you? That really is an important question. One that's probably good to ask yourself on a regular basis. Because this question, it's not really just asking what's important to you. I mean, that's a part of it, right? But it's really more than this. It is asking you to define. What is the highest and most precious thing in your life which you treasure above all others? Now, when you're asked a question like this, a lot of times there's, you know, sort of two ways of answering it. The first is by stating the ideal of what should be most important to you. Usually these will be good things, say Christ and the forgiveness of sins, the word of God, and so forth. And I bet for a lot of you, these sorts of things really are important. At least they should be. But there is another way of answering this question as well. And it has to do with a moment of honesty about the underlying intents of the sinful heart. It's the answer no sinner really wants to give. But it's probably much closer to the truth of the matter. We actually kind of see this in our gospel lesson for today. You have the example of two different people, the rich man on the one hand and the poor Lazarus on the other. For the rich man's part, he lives his life dressed in fine purple linens, and he feasts sumptuously every day to his heart's content. He probably doesn't think of himself as a bad, sinful person, for he must be obviously quite outwardly successful. Even when he ends up in hell, he likely thinks of himself as a rather reasonable fellow because he still has concern for his brothers, doesn't he? He doesn't want them to have to endure the torment that he's undergoing. Those aren't the desires of someone who has no care or concern for his family members. I mean, you kind of think about it, really. His life outwardly looks somewhat normal, as he cares both for his financial prosperity and at least some of his family. For the rich man... These things, especially his earthly prosperity, had become his answer to the question, what matters most to you? And they had, in effect, become his God. Because he cared about them above all other things. It didn't have to be that way. But the sinfulness of his heart had become set on the world in a way that God had never intended. And that had led to his eternal ruin. What becomes so hard for you when you try to answer the question, what matters most to you, is that you also are faced with the reality that like the rich man, you have your own things that you are tempted to place as the most important thing in your life. I'm going to give you just a few examples today. and I, I've kind of thought about ones that might hurt a little bit. Because Jesus wants you to be aware that becoming like the rich man in today's text, it's a real risk. Just as the rich man did, some of you might be tempted to have as that most important thing in your life, your wealth. And from it, you might draw your confidence and your security. It's not hard to do this. In fact, it's really easy. And I bet all of us at one time or another have done it. And maybe we're all doing it right now. Wealth is easy to make one's God. Because with it, there's almost nothing that you can't do. It promises easy solutions to what otherwise might be challenging problems. Like when a major appliance goes out. Or maybe when you get in a car accident, all of a sudden the next day you got to go out and buy yourself another car. It also promises you the ability to comfort your flesh with things like fine clothes, fancy foods, 
These are things that bring comfort and solace to the self. They're not really bad in and of themselves. But it's amazing how easy it is for those things to become needs instead of luxuries. And when they are taken away and those outward comforts of the flesh are gone, well, that can make for one grumpy soul. Something else that can easily become the highest priority in life is your perceived control over your life. Beyond just wealth and pleasures, I'm talking about actually being in control of your life. Keeping it predictable, maintaining your influence of people and things around you, being able to divert problems. And usually, you know if you're one of these sorts of people, if you worry a lot about maintaining control, or if you're stressed about things over which you have very little control, the desire for control itself, that too can become what matters most. It is hard to be honest with yourself when it comes to the question, what matters most to you? Because somewhere in that question, that old sinner will assert itself in ways that are really hard to admit. And chances are you know the ways in which that old Adam and you comes out by the very way that you answer the question. There is, however, another way of answering this question today that your Lord also describes. And it is a way that is also true for you as your Lord preserves you in true faith and life. And the answer comes in the person of Lazarus. And also the declaration from Abraham that it is Moses and the prophets which have the power to deliver from everlasting torments of hell to life eternal. For Lazarus' part, he has a very undesirable station in life. One that few would either desire or find any enjoyment at all. He is so poor that even the crumbs from the rich man's table look like delightfully appetizing food. And he is so destitute that even the basic care of his body is beyond reach. He is covered with sores that he cannot get rid of, which even the dogs exacerbate by licking. His life has all the appearances of total misery. But underneath this miserable-looking life, there is something quite precious. Something that to Lazarus matters most, even more than food and bodily well-being. He cares most about the things of God. That is the very thing that Abraham commends to the rich man in regard to his brothers. The law and the prophets. For as Abraham says, it is only these things which are able to deliver the soul from everlasting damnation. Not even someone coming back from the dead to warn the living about the torments of hell would be enough. Only the word of God has the power to deliver from everlasting death to everlasting life. And to Lazarus, this word of God, this word of Christ must be most important. For he is not in hell, but in heaven. He possesses the most important thing of all. And it is most important to him. He may not be outwardly rich. He may not be dressed in fine clothes or feast on sumptuous foods. He may not even have much worldly control over his life. But he is most certainly the richest of all people because the treasures he possesses will endure forever. And what might we ask be these treasures? Well, they are obviously the things that God commends to us in the Law and the Prophets. Things like true repentance, faith in Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and the promise of life everlasting. Against these things, the world has nothing that will finally matter. And to the people of God like Lazarus, these are the things that should matter most. To you should the greatest care be given to true repentance, such that the law of God and the Ten Commandments would be in your heart and in your mind, and as a constant source of examination that will reveal the true intents of your hearts. And those intents, as you well know, as you reflect on the Ten Commandments, they are not the things of God. How blessed are you then 
when you are smitten by the law of God and have your sin revealed to you. Because only in that revelation will you come to know the great evil that is that sin. And your Lord is gracious in this very act. Gracious enough to call you to repent of all that evil. That you might not be ruled by it. But come to see it abhorrently for the evil that it is. And of course, there is nowhere to find solace against the evil of your own heart other than in Christ and true faith in him. In the mercy of God, you come to know the gravity of your sins so that you might also come to know the necessity of Christ and the infinite love that is found in him. This is what Lazarus has come to know. For there is no hope in trying to save oneself through the law of God. It will only lead to despair or hypocrisy. True hope is found for you, just like it is for Lazarus, in the Christ, the only begotten Son of God who has come to live, die, and rise again that you might receive through faith in Him the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of eternal life. And those things, they are the very things that you have received. While that old Adam might try to rage against you lest you have these things as your most important things, yet have you been given them by the very mercy of God in Christ Jesus. You, like Lazarus, are a forgiven child of God. It does not matter how wealthy you are, the clothes you wear, or how much control you have over your life. You have been forgiven because Christ, whom you trust, has paid for your sins and bestowed his righteousness upon you. And like Lazarus, your end will not be everlasting damnation like the rich man, but the blessedness of life eternal with your heavenly Father forever. You are the richest of all people, even far beyond the riches of the likes of the rich man. And this very point about the riches that you have received, it kind of also raises another interesting question. Because if you are, in fact, the most blessed of all in Christ because of the treasures he's given you, what should that mean? about what is actually most important to you here and now. Well, all of a sudden, it's kind of a good reminder that your wealth, your clothes, and your control, they're all good and fine. But they are really just not that important. They are not the most important when it comes to what really matters most. If you should lose all these things, you will be no less eternally blessed in fact, you might just be more. Because if you were to get drawn away into the idolatrous love of those former things, like the rich man, you might lose the latter things. And what a loss that would be. For you, it really means that what happens here, right here at faith, is what matters most. Because here you hear the word of God. Each time you gather together with the people of God, you hear the law. You hear the prophets. You hear the good news of Christ crucified and risen for you. You hear that you are the baptized, blessed with the name of God written upon your forehead and your heart to mark you as a child of God and a disciple not of the world and the things of the world, but a disciple of Christ and an heir of the kingdom of heaven. You hear in this place that Christ comes to you as the Lamb of God, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins, in, with, and under the bread and wine in His Holy Supper. All of this is the greatest blessing to you. Because as you go back out into your life after gathering here, the Word of God, Christ Himself, He goes with you. And He reminds you through the Word who you really are in Him. And of the things that matter most, most. And he warns you about the dangers and trappings of the world and all evil. This word of God guards and protects you. It does. It keeps you in Christ and in the fold. It is for such good reason then that Abraham commends the law and the prophets to the living. For only by these do you possess what matters most each and every day of your life. And all of a sudden, those things that your flesh loves, they don't seem as ingratiating in comparison to the things of God. 
The Lord <coughs> begins and continues to work on you each and every day to remove from your hearts and your minds the love of what was once most important under the flesh and to replace it with a love for what is most important to your soul. So that instead of loving riches, clothing, and control, you love in faith the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives you the most important things of all, the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.